everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now, when was the last time you did something just for you? Can you remember taking some time out to do something that you really enjoy? Tonight, we're talking about the importance of me time and why doing the things you enjoy can have a strong, positive influence in many areas of your life. Joining me tonight, we have psychologist Andrew Bernard discussing why people don't think it's essential to take time out and how we can change that thinking. And we also have love experts James and Helena Marquez to tell us why it's important to take some time away from your partner to strengthen your relationship. And also we have Christina Nicolaides, who works long, unsociable hours with no free time. All she does is work and she's a bit worried about the future. But first of all, let's welcome Bianca Clayton, who's here with some stories. Hello, darling. Hello, Chris. How are I'm you? Good. I'm good, thank you. Do you How take you? me time? Not really. I'm one of those people that I get some me time, then I'll fill it up with something. So I don't really. really? Spend, yeah, and I like spending time with people. So I don't really spend much time on alone. I don't really like doing that. Are you scared of being by yourself? No, I just don't. I just find it boring. I just find it, I, I, <laughs> you find it boring. You're not boring. I do. No, but you can't talk to yourself, can you? So it's just like. Well, I do. <laughs> I just, I'd prefer to be with people and talk and like chat. I find if I watch a film on my own, I just find it a little bit boring. It's oh, like, I love to be by myself really? to watch things. I don't like people talking when there's films on stuff like that. I like sleeping um, by myself, having a nice big bed all to myself. Yeah. But other than that, I just like being around people. Okay, interesting. We might get Andrew to analyse you afterwards. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us, we had a couple of comments, didn't we, from the viewers Yes, well. we have. Oh, by the way, if you want to comment, you can email on chris at chriscbshow.tv. And also, if you'd like to give us a call and tell us what you do for me time, you can call on 20 So I asked our viewers, how important is me time to you and do you have enough? Jamie says, as a full-time nurse and mum, I leave out at 7am for the school run, then on to work and I get home around 7pm. Then after cooking and putting the kids to bed, I don't get time to relax until about 9pm. I save at any time I can get, but love my family and job so I wouldn't change it for the world. Chanel says, I get, caught so, get so caught up with work doing things for others and general chores, so I have to accept I don't get a huge amount. But it's very important to look out for yourselves, to recoup and to keep healthy. In my spare time, I like to watch movies with a glass of rosé and talk to my friends and family on the phone. I that's suppose nice. if you love your job, yeah, it's different. that's kind of different. If, but imagine like you don't really like your job, you actually hate it, you don't look forward no, to it, when you don't look forward to going into work. Then you, that's a huge chunk of your day gone. And then not having much time afterwards, that must be a nightmare. The worst thing ever, must be so it? depressing. Yeah, that's true. You really need to love your job. Or work less. Or work less. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to talk about this yeah. story first. I'm going to be talking about general news. So adult breastfeeding is the newest trend for China's super rich. They're paying thousands a month for human breast milk. Adults or clients can drink it directly through breastfeeding or they can drink oh. it from a breast pump um, if they feel too embarrassed. That's so disgusting. Critics are saying the trend for adults buying breast milk cheapens its natural function and the bond between mother and child, and I agree as well. Nine out of ten people say they disagree with the practice, and um, which is from an online poll. So what do you think, Chris? I think, I, I, I don't see, I don't understand it at all. I'm like, I Hang think... On, let me get this right. They're actually wrong. getting it directly from yeah. the boob. You can directly get it from the boob or you can use a pump. That, that, sorry. And I don't think That's the pump's any better, That's just something else. I'm sorry. You don't have to get it directly from... You can get it from a... A pump? Yeah. But not from a... <laughs> sorry, I'm just, I'm just a bit shocked. I'm, no, 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 that's nasty, sorry. You don't think it's going to catch up? No. Well, I, I don't know, it might be over there, but not over yeah. here. Yeah, I think it's just like, because it's only people who have got a lot of money that are doing it. So I think they're oh. doing it for attention and they're bored and they want to do something that's just new, weird, unique. Sorry. No. So that's a bit strange, yeah. isn't it? So I had to ask our Chrissy B viewers about this one. So Rachel says breast milk should be for children only, and that's how God intended it to be. Jane says it's just a bit of new entertainment for China's super rich and it won't last. Aaron uh, says I think it adds to China's problem of treating women as consumer goods and yes, the moral exactly. filth of China's rich. Mm. And um, Petra says I know it's I know it's good for people, but I think it's disgusting and weird. Yes, which I agree to as well. Yeah, me too. That's a strange one. So uh, another one that made me chuckle on the train, I read this in the newspaper, it really made me laugh. So a drunk Sri Lankan cricketer tried to open a plain cabin door at 35,000 feet. Oh my God. The 21-year-old Ramif got... That made you giggle. It made me laugh. I was like, what is that's, he doing? That's horrible. Like, what an <laughs> idiot. Yeah, but he was drunk, Chrissy. That made me laugh. I was like, what was he doing? 
So um, he got up during the flight and tried to go to the toilet, but instead of going to the toilet, he tried pushing and pulling the aircraft door in Did the Did he think that was the toilet? Flight. Yeah, he thought it was oh. the toilet. So he was pulling at it, oh, thinking no. it was the toilet, really drunk out of his face. And he was what, they don't let him on a plane that drunk? That's it. He might have got drunk on the plane, yeah, though, but I'm not they, sure. they can see how much alcohol they're giving people. Yeah, that's true. So much he's only young, he's only 21. Oh, no. So the passengers started panicking when they saw him tugging at the cabin door. Of course. Um, and the cabin crew came running over to stop him. So British Airways say, reassured the passengers that they were safe and, and it's impossible to open the door mid-flight. Um, but it still wouldn't stop you from being scared, would, you, would it? I think I probably would have, well, someone should have rugby Stopped tackled him. him or something. I know, I might, when I read it, I imagined the cabin crew rugby tackled him. You can't be polite in situations him. like that, yeah. can you? So he's apologised yeah. and he said it was really silly and that um, he feels really, really embarrassed by the situation. And he's, um, no, I find it apologized. quite interesting about the door not opening, sort of, because that means it can get jammed when people want to get out, emergency. What, the um, thingy door? Yeah. People don't normally go out the door, they go out the window, don't they? Uh, haven't you read those signs? <laughs> the windows are that small, Bianca. Yeah, but don't they get those Why like a foot out? Inflatable anyway, things? sorry, let's just go to the next you one. You need to read the health and safety on the aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you should have tried out these lenses in my next story. Experts have created new contact lenses that give you vision like Superman. The lenses magnify vision by three times the amount given wearers telescopic vision. Oh gosh, um, the lenses have be been weird. designed to restore sight in blind people. So that's really good. And so not for the average person. That the average person as well, but for God, that must generally be really weird, for though. blind people, yeah. Imagine being so able to see that. That would be strange, wow. wouldn't it? I, I want to try that sound it. That weird. I would love to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so researchers from San Diego in Switzerland fitted a normal contact lens with a magnifying ring, which when worn with a pair of Samson 3D glasses can magnify scenes by 2.8 times the amount. Wow. Bianca, strange. we've got about a minute left before we go to our video. Oh, we've no. got one more short I've one. I've got loads of it. I've got oh, loads. Have you? All right, so I'll have to keep you on then. Yeah. Okay, okay. so now I thought our next sales were um, were bad. You know, the, the next sales when they open yeah, at like yeah. five in the morning. So McDonald's Hello Kitty toys are causing chaos in Singapore. The latest Hello Kitty toy promotion has caused weeks of fights, fainting and traffic congestion. Hundreds of people have queued up for at least six hours to complete their collection of the new fairy tale range, which was sold out within 24 hours after release. And not only that, but many customers are queuing up with a different motive to make a profit. And um, it's now been reported that one of the toys sold on eBay for around £4,000. And McDonald's have now put a stop to the promotion because it was getting extremely out of hand. Can you imagine? Can you right, believe thank that? Thank you, Bianca. You're going to stay on, aren't yes, you? I'll Maybe. Stay on. If you don't have to go. Um, <laughs> so we've got a challenge, Chrissy, now. This is another one of our challenges that we did. So take a look at this. And then afterwards, we'll be back with our first guests, Andrew and Christina. Join us after this. Hi everyone and I'm here for my next challenge Chrissy and today it's hovercrafting and I'm here with Barbara today. Hi Barb. Hi. How are you? I'm good and I'm ready for the challenge of beating you. You're not going to run away? <laughs> no. Okay good. <laughs> Alright and I'm here also with Neil our instructor for the day so tell me Neil what's going to happen today exactly? Alright well we're going to have some challenge relays and we're going to see who can beat each other's time basically so one to go first and the second one will have to try and beat the time. Okay. Well, Barbara beat me by cheating when we were doing <laughs> no, some car no. racing. Yeah. Ah, so hopefully I'll get my own back and I'll win this time. So, no, you're going to take us to some training first of all, right? Yeah, that's right. We're going to take you on a bit of training so you can learn how to manoeuvre the craft. Mm. Then we'll take you out on track for your bit of fun, for your challenge. Lovely. Looking forward to it. And hopefully I'm going to beat Barbara this time. Join us in a sec.
And the winner for this one is... Chris! Oh, <laughs> well done! Oh, well done! All are coming through this with you, it's great fun! I had great fun on this challenge and I can safely say that. This is one that I have passed because I came first with the timings, but it's not actually as easy as it looks, is it Neil? No, it's not to be honest, uh, you're hovering. So there's a lot of done by body weight when you steer at a thing. Mm -hmm. Do you get all sorts of people coming here? Oh yeah, we have from young to the old, uh, from 12 upwards. And they all have a go. Yeah. It's pretty good. And why would you say this is a challenge? It's not like driving a car, really. You're flying a boat. <laughs> I would have said it's something along them lines, but yeah, it, it's great fun. Come along and have a go. All right, I, I second that. Do come along and have a go. I had really great time today. Neil, thank you so, so much. No, you're very welcome. Thank Hope you. to see you again sometime right, soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So thanks very much to Neil, who's a great instructor, and all the team at Hovercraft Adventures. Thank you for a great, great day. So we're going to go to a quick break, and as I said afterwards, we're going to be joined by Andrew and Christina to talk about me time further. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back, and we're discussing the importance of me time on the show tonight. And joining me now, I have psychologist Andrew Bernard, and also we have Christina Nicolades. Hello. Hi. Hi. So good to have you both. Hi. Thank you. Now, we're going to be talking about how important me time is. And Christina, I know you don't get any me time. Can you tell the viewers what you do and the kind of sort of life you lead? <laughs> I work very unsociable hours. I am a sports journalist and TV presenter. Mm -hmm. So um, I do everything from writing the sport to presenting the sport to producing myself. Um, and then I do uh, casino channels as well because I am a trained creepier. Gosh. So wh what kind of like time do you have off? Because you obviously like... Well, I, I actually classed the night as being off, but mm. it was quite interesting when you said, actually, Christina, uh, yeah, you're not a, off. There was a moment <laughs> in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it is a night off. To, but like, tonight is a night off for you? Yeah. Right. I see we have a little problem here. <laughs> what do you think about that, Andrew? Well, we had this great discussion and, uh, <laughs> when we were all in the green room, just chatting about what we might be discussing tonight. And uh, when you said that, you know... Uh, oh, it's my night off. You know, first thing that went through my mind was, for most people, going on TV live would not be a night off. Yeah, it's so stressful. you kind of set yourself quite a high, high bar yeah. as what you think is relaxation. And uh, I suppose it is my life though, because I am on TV kind of. Yeah, it's probably used to. It's not as nerve-wracking. Three or four as days a week. Yeah. yeah. It's your life, but if, if is it something you're querying about why what, why you're living the way you are? You seem to be querying the way you're living you are, the way you are, and that's really interesting about the choices you're making. Yeah. But we can discuss that maybe later. Well, Christina, you, do you enjoy your job though? Because yeah, we were saying it. earlier, do you love it? So I suppose for you, it's not it's not that kind of job where you wake up and you're like, oh my god, I've got to go into work today, and I'm not. It's not that kind of thing. So at least you're you're having fun while you're at work, right? But what other stuff do you like doing apart um, from working? I am um, an ex-professional swimmer, so I used to swim for Wales. Wow. Although Cyprus wanted me at one point, but I chose Wales. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. And. Um, yeah. So I, so if I'm not working, I train quite a lot, and I see that as me time. Mm -hmm. But it's always, I suppose, it's, I'm always on the go, and I don't know what to do. If if you kind of say to me, spend the night in on the sofa. If I'm really really tired, I can do it. But if I'm not, I, I'm so restless. I you you, I put a film on and I end up p pacing up and down. Right. Yeah, so why down. why is the lack of me time a problem for you then? Because you sound like you enjoy you enjoy swimming, yeah. and you enjoy your work. Why is why is it a concern for you? What concerns me is the future because no. I might, well, hopefully I look young um, and I certainly mm -hmm. feel young, but I am, I'm going to be 34 in December. She makes and it sound like it's old. No, oh, no, 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 but the, you know, and especially like having a separate background, you're yeah, expected I know, I know. to get married yeah, and have kids and, and yeah. I definitely want that, but then I look at my life and I think, 
how does that actually work? How does that actually fit in? Mm. And it's not just saying tomorrow, oh, do you know, you know, yeah, I can financially, I can support myself, I can have a baby, but because of the way that I was brought up, I don't want to bring up a baby on my on my own. Mm. I'd want to bring it up with someone, someone else. So you're worried about basically it. meeting so someone, yeah, meeting the right yeah, person. Yeah, it's meeting the right person, yeah. spending enough time with them. Because once you have kids, and I've got friends who've got kids, they're like, your life changes. You never yeah, have yeah. the same time. So it's really important that you spend, ideally, three or four years, or two or three years before you have kids, yeah. to actually really cement that bond. Because once you have kids, right. they become your life. Mm -hmm. Do you get a lot of pressure from your family then as well? Is that kind of, does that worry you? They might be watching, but... Um, Y yes Hello, and, yes, everybody. From yes, the Greek yes, house. yes, and no. Because um, yeah. I know that they would love me to, and I'm the eldest, so mm. I suppose there's more pressure on me. Yeah. Um, and I would, per I would love if I met the right person. I'd definitely get married, and I'm certainly ready for kids. But I actually, mm. I really love my job, and I really love what I do. So it's, where, do you, how do you compromise? Mm -hmm. And obviously, I know there has to be a compromise, but it's how do you do it, and where do you do it? because I'm a really independent person. I think if I can't do everything or things that make me the person that I am, I don't want to lose myself in that because then I won't be, I don't feel I'd be the best parent. You I connect could be your job best. to who you are. Yeah, it is because sport is my life. It has, it mm. has always has been. That's quite an interesting one, mm. isn't it? I think that's a good point. I think you yeah. My dad was a footballer as well, so it's kind of sport runs through the family. Mm -hmm. But he was a footballer, no doubt, but he was also something else. He was a dad and he had other things as well. Yeah. So his job wasn't, didn't define all of him. No. And I'm intrigued by the way you're defining yourself as I'm yeah. a swimmer. I'm with this quite high achieving statement because yeah. you are a high achiever. And it's I think Wales signed me at four. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> so but, you, you know, got an early was, message yeah, very early yeah. on about how special you were yeah. and how high achieving you were. So it's not yeah. surprising you're still living that out to some degree because we do live those messages out yeah. throughout our lives. And I wouldn't presume to go into it all now, but if, if, we, if we were to have counselling, because I work as a counsellor, then I'd be looking at the choices you're making and who you're making them for and uh, who you're trying to please and so it's, forth. it's also how to snap out of and it. And what to do next. Yeah. And that's about making other small choices that you're not even aware you're making. Mm. Well, I don't actually feel the way I live my life is wrong. But it, it's the thought of the future. No, I don't. No, I'm not but saying it is. Oh, it's <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's, but it's, but it's a thought of the future because it's like, I, you know, I don't want to. Sure. I know that sounds really sad, but I don't want to grow old alone. I'm quite, you mm. know, I I enjoy my me time. Sure. But I want to have the family and I want to have the kids, and it's all Still, also like, if, how question. do I stick it all together? A, Go a on. Question that: If tomorrow you were to lose both your jobs, all your jobs. How would you feel? Devastated, as a absolutely devastated, like a complete failure. See, this this is the pro the problem. This is the issue that I have with what you're saying because yeah. it's like you've put your whole personal everything pinned to your job when yeah. you've got so much more going for you. You're a person. You're a daughter. You're a sister, presumably. Yeah. You, you've got other things in your life that are important. That is you as well, and probably lots of other things that you would probably maybe not even pay attention to. Yeah. So your job isn't everything. It's like you as a person, your personality, your character, the way you, you are is you. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, I think, because sometimes people pin everything on a, a job or a, a career and stuff. And if something happens tomorrow, it's like, that's why people sometimes get suicidal. They lose something or they lose yeah. it. Or the, for example, they pin everything on a person that they love. And when, if that person goes tomorrow, it's like, everything falls apart yeah. and that's I think where the danger is with you mm. that maybe the way you're seeing your career it's great to love your job but I mean I love my job but I have other things that are just as important to me or more important that will always be there in a sense yeah. you see what I mean don't get me wrong I make you know I love my family and I make family time we've got a new addition yeah. uh, baby Lewis who's four oh. months and I make sure that every week I go and see him yeah Maybe invest more time, sort of family-wise and things like that. Mm. I don't know. But anyway, let's get to the love life. Mm. But how long have I got? I haven't got long, have I? Went into one then. Oh, we've got four minutes. Okay, we've got four minutes. So about the, I can understand oh, your life. concerns about the love life. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're a gorgeous girl. Thank you. Sitting on our sofa, don't you agree, viewers? And I'm sure do you, you, you must get a lot of interest from, from guys, right? Yeah. 
So where, where do you actually see them for them to be interested in you? How do you know? Um, well, it's not, I don't normally notice. It's other people that notice. It, you know, if I'm walking down the street with my mum or my aunt, they're like, that, that person was checking you out. And I'm like, you don't even realise. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, the, well, the other day, uh, Sunday, I went round to uh, see my aunt and we popped out to actually go and get some Greek kebabs. <laughs> my aunt said to me... Why did you have to put that in my head? Sorry. It, oh, oh, it's I'm very nice. about kebabs now. Very nice. Right. Um, but literally, my aunt said, did you, did you see that person? Look at you, he's quite cute. And I just went, no. I don't, I don't so even So you could be missing it. opportunities there that you're not even... Yeah. Hmm, interesting. So our love talk team that are sitting over there are going to be sort of... You're getting, you're getting all this, guys, yeah? You'll be, you're be, I think they've got a lot be, of questions and things that they're going to say. Me, <laughs> all right. So, Andrew, tell us first, before we go to a break as well, tell us why it is important to have that, that me time. Because for me, actually, what Christine is saying, her me time is the swimming and stuff like that. So she is doing stuff that she enjoys. But what about in general with, with people? Why it's important to have that time? Well, it's a question of what, the, what you're doing. Like, the time that you do is about achieving a lot of that is stuff you really love to do. Mm. And uh, but I'd wonder you know, about how much uh, time you create to really concentrate on what you want, really away from achieving, away from all that kind of Bad mm. winning and all that stuff, but that's another issue. I'm not, but I, I don't know how to separate that though, because it very, you know, if you if you if you join the Welsh swim team at the age of four and you start training twice a day, five days mm. a week, and then train on a Saturday and get a Sunday off. Well, if you've learned that all your life, it can be really hard to separate mm. it in one yeah. go. So you do a little piece at a time, but you have to be aware of you, yourself doing it, make little choices. Because um, me time's important, and that's it's where you stop for a minute, and even for a few minutes, rather than just dive into another activity, because yeah. if you do that, you're going to we, anyone, would end up just doing the same thing again, making more, lots of effort into this new activity. With proper me time, you pause a little bit and start to work out what it is you really want to do, yeah. what it is that really makes you happy. And it could be, you go do a high achieving thing, it could be something very much quieter and more mm. passive. But um, And I, also, I can't be the only girl in, you know, in, and I'm, so, I'm sure I'm certainly not, you know, in the 30s is the new 20s, and mm -hmm. there are lots of women who are just spending more time achieving, trying to be... Well, lots of people are spending more time achieving, but it impinges upon women in their 30s much more uh, mm. roughly and hard, in a harder way, because they have the choice about to have kids or not, as mm. you're going through. That, so is, it's a kids yeah. that is yeah. really yeah. tough. That is really tough, and men often don't really get that most mm. of the time. It's not an issue. So that, that extra pressure, so you can't... Huge extra pressure. You've got that on the back of your mind. Well, yeah. my doctor said to me, if I seriously want to think about uh, harvesting my ed eggs, ideally you need to do it around the 35 mm. mark, and roughly um, you're looking at about £10,000. Mm. But then, like you said, you want to you know, be with someone and bring mm. up a child, you know, mm. two of you, so that's not even... It's a price of a second-hand car, it? you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not advocating either way, I'm just saying... It's a good job we live in London and we can use public transport. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Alrighty, so, yeah. Christina, we're going to go to a quick break, and Andrew. So, after the break, we're going to be joined by Love Talk hosts Helena and James Marquez, and they're going to be giving Christina here some advice to so join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, welcome back and we're speaking about the importance of me time today. And we still have Christina with us and also we've been joined by Love Talk host James <coughs> and Helena Marquez. Hello. Hi, hi. Thanks hi. for having me. So you've been listening to everything, yeah? Yes, yes we have. have. I just asked Christina a question during the break, actually, which was quite interesting. I got quite an interesting answer and I asked if you had more free time, what would you do with it? And you were thinking a while, you couldn't think of anything. No. And it's because she, she was saying that you can't think that far ahead because you're always... Your mind's always busy with the things that you have to do at work and stuff yeah. like that. And plus I know what work projects are coming up. So I'm yeah. always focusing on the next thing, the next thing to prepare for, the next thing to do. Right, okay. So, guys, we have someone here that loves the job. Mm -hmm. like they're, they're, her, free, her idea of like having fun and stuff is the swim, which is great because it keeps you fit as well. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's no problem with work or anything like that, but the, the issue is meeting someone, you know, there are many pe busy people, and I'm sure you, you talk to couples all the time, sorry, single people all the time mm. that are very busy. How, what, what advice would you give Christina in this case? 
Well, there's, there's a couple of points that I was thinking about, and I imagine the, the swimming for you is also a, a stress reliever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what a lot of people do with sports. And I think no matter how busy you are, I think there has to be for everyone a cutoff point, right? Where you say, uh, and, and you have to have that at some point, because when there is a relationship, if there is no cutoff point, then the relationship starts to suffer. Yeah, this is true. something people don't like to hear. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think it's, um, it's difficult, especially if you, if you really love your job and you want to be involved all the, all the time and, and you're a bit of a control freak that you want to make sure everything's right. Mm -hmm. But if there is no cutoff point, then your job sort of rules your life. And at this point, it's not a problem because you're on your own, I, I, I yeah. assume. Yeah. Right? But when there is a relationship, that can be a big problem. Mm -hmm. That would be the first advice. Yeah, because it's true, because when you do meet someone and you will, when you do meet someone, when are you going to make time mm -hmm. for them? You have to start making that time now from when you're in a relationship that you yeah. do have that, that your time with that, that person as well. So what was the second? You had something well, else there? I have others, but just a little something more. Um, there's a time in, in, in our lives where we have to make choices. And women nowadays, like you said, 30s are the new 20s. But you know, women are different from men. You, as you said, you want you, you're thinking of having children in the future and everything. You have to make decisions. Yeah. You have to, you know. I know that nowadays women know we we go out there, we we conquer this, we learn this, we we which achieve, is great, mm -hmm. which is Some wonderful. Extent, yeah. However, you need to have a balance. Otherwise, yeah. it's either it's as it is, either children, family, or. Yeah. Your career. Although, <laughs> uh, although I mean, your job is very important to you and that's part of who you are. Mm. I don't think it's something you, you, sh you should ever quit. That's part of who you are, makes yeah. you happy. So yeah. you just have to find a way to, to, to balance, balance the two things and there has to be that cut-off point. Mm. Otherwise, it's... I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I've had relationships met many, over mm. the, uh, many over the years. But I kind of... Um, I've never met a man where I would say I don't want to live without him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if it came to the man or the job... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it, but it, do you I have the time to invest in that relationship? Though? Yeah, some of them have been, you know, one yeah. was seven years, one was three years. Um, but the quality but, time, but I'm saying, like, say, for example, an average week, say, would you have enough time to sort of cultivate that relationship and really get to know each other? And, or was it just sort of just every now and then see him and with no with the with the seven year relationship i mean we we had a business together so mm, okay. um we were together all the time mm -hmm. um and we were achieving together which was um okay. a, a really phenomenal dynamic to mm. experience but then when i got the opportunity to advance more in mm. my career and I, and I did have to make the choice um i chose the job Right. Yeah, and, and that takes me to the second point, because you, you mentioned that that seven year relationship, you had your partner at that time working together with you, you had a business together. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. My second point was that if you, if you are so busy and so into your job, ideally it would be good to have someone who's in the same okay. field, mm -hmm. who's there with you. Because for example, I, uh, I work virtually seven days a week, you know, from really early to late at night. And it's not a problem for me and mm -hmm. her because we work together. Yeah. So it's okay. So that's, that's an advantage, of course. You mm. can't pick who you, you end up loving, right? Mm. Although it's an intelligent decision, not just an emotional one. But you can't just go to your job and say, okay, I'll have that guy. So <laughs> it doesn't work like that, right? What if there's like a present can I, can TV I presenters? <laughs> Yeah, meeting singles, singles or, yeah. thing. That would be interesting. You should look yeah. into that. Can we set one up for? <laughs> I think we should set one up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Do you know what happened? It's, it's like this. I, I I find it interesting what she said. She never felt like a man was like, oh, you know, um, mm -hmm. I can't even say it. Um, it's, not, it's not. It's not a man that I someone that you've met like, oh. without. It's mm. it's. It's, it's a man that I don't want to live without. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's mm -hmm. meeting, I suppose, that person that I would want to make the compromise mm. for mm -hmm. that I haven't but met that also yet. means or that... Do, do you ever meet, you know? I, do you I believe you do. I, I'm sure you do. It's just that I, I think then we have to say that that man or, or the man that you had the relationship with in the past, then they weren't the right person because mm -hmm. yeah. I You're would not, not watch it. I <laughs> would not. I would not, under any circumstance, give up my marriage for any anything else. And by the way, on Sunday we are completing twelve years of marriage. Ooh, nice. Nice. Congratulations! Congratulations! Oh, just yeah. twelve years. So <laughs> I think once you meet the right person, that's it. Yeah. You you 
you do anything to, to be with that and, person. And you I don't so, have yeah. to give up, like, like you said, give up your career because you found that person. But it's, it's something that you need to learn how to do. Mm. To now. conceal the two things. Yeah, yeah, because one day, even if you don't have a man, if you, let's say, because many women nowadays, they, they bring up their children on their own, you still have to make time for them. Otherwise, they will grow up to be these people, these traumatized people. Mm -hmm. well, you know, the, the mom was never there, the, mm -hmm. the dad was never there. You know, you always have to make a choice. So I think, I think I the think key is in finding the right that, person. That's the thing. I think yeah. that is the, the actual issue, that yeah. the fact that you haven't met the right one. Because if you, if you had you wouldn't make the time because you'd want to spend time with that person. So I think, for me, I don't think you have an issue with me time because I think you are getting the me time with the swimming and you love your job. It is the fact that you really haven't met. But I think also you need to have your antennas a bit on as well because, like I said, you're walking around and you don't notice when people look at you. So there may be someone that's been flirting with you, even at work maybe, and you haven't even noticed. You just see that person mm. maybe as a friend or you haven't thought, and they probably really like you and you're not... You haven't seen it because yeah, you're so right. into your work. So I would say just kind of switch on a little bit. It's not that you're going to be like, oh, you know, does anyone like me? No, not like that. But just to be more aware of the people around you and see if anyone's sort of given a bit more interest and paying you a bit more attention or has mm. given you maybe a compliment or said something nice. Because that's normally a little sign. And if they're not getting anything back from you, they're probably thinking, oh, she, she's not interested at all. Well, maybe you really would be if you knew that person had, you know, Well, for example, you. I agree with what you're saying, but for example... We, we've we've counselled many women that they are like this because I, I, I don't know you. I'll just give an example. Okay. They are so business career driven that they intimidate their friends. Mm. I mean, their friends, you know, their colleagues that maybe mm. have a crush on them or something. Or yeah, they intimidate <laughs> men. Yeah, I'm that sure there's someone who likes you. As she said, you are a beautiful uh, woman, okay. but maybe you are this kind of person. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being career driven. You know, you have to start like what she said. You know, having your antennas a bit like. You know, I'm looking for the right person, so maybe I have to. I know that I'm all this. I am. I know that I'm this powerful woman because we all think <laughs> <laughs> I can we achieve. Are, I can. You know, I'm successful. You know, we yeah. full of confidence, but you have to don't show it too much. Sometimes, I know it sounds might sound silly. But how do you do? How do you do that? You pay more attention. For example. Maybe you haven't, have you ever noticed anyone you liked or, oh, that person, you know, that works with you or maybe uh, swimming, someone you know from swimming or family, friends or whatever. You know, when you are around people that could be potential, mm -hmm. you know, partners, I don't know, you are like, you know, turn it down a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and see what happens. I mean, I don't know. Think, James? I understand what you mean. Though. Yeah, I, I think it's it's if it's part of who you are. I think it's very difficult to tone down. You can't really tone down who you are. Yeah. But but it's a very good point what Elena you have said. To make an effort that in some mind. some men they do feel intimidated by women who are doing really well. Sometimes because they're not doing so well, or sometimes <laughs> because they think you know. I, I well, don't maybe or maybe they are doing well, but they think, oh my god, I don't think she's gonna. You know, they always maybe they see themselves mm -hmm. down here, although yeah. they might have a career. Yeah. But if I have to change myself to be with that person, or is it is that person then the right person? Yeah, I would want but, to be with someone who exactly. can match me, yeah. someone who can challenge me. And, exactly. and that's why I said it's very difficult for you to tone down who you are. I don't think it's, you can do that, but you, you can be absolutely sure, I'm a man, I know this, that many men are intimidated by women who are doing really well for themselves. Mm. And, and sometimes, you know, not changing who you are, mm. but understanding that yeah. can make the world of a difference. It's tricky. But you have to pay attention to small maybe things. Sort of maybe like, for example, if you're in a conversation with a, with a guy and instead of sort of talking a lot about your career and what you do and everything, just ask him more questions. Mm. G be interested in what he has to say more. Ask him more about his work and make him feel like, you know, oh, he's the man kind of thing. Do you see what I mean? Because yeah. not that you're... And eventually, as you get to know him, because once, once you get to know each other more, then you can be, you know... It's not that you're going to hide who you are, but it's just that you're giving him an opportunity to feel comfortable with you mm -hmm. and then, then start talking more. And then he's going to, then he'll obviously he'll love you for who you are after that. Do you see what I mean? Oh, we've got, we've, we have to go to a break. Already? <laughs> but I hope that was helpful, Christina. It was, I think thank we need you. another hour. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, was that useful for you? Have you got yeah, a few yeah, points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. Okay, wonderful. Thanks thank for you me. so much for sharing your, your life <laughs> with everyone at home <laughs> as well. <laughs> Okay, and, I, and I'm sure you're going to meet someone soon, now with the antennas on and stuff like that, all right? <laughs> Watch this space. If, if yeah. any emails come through, we'll let you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll have you back up with you, meet someone. <laughs>
All right, James, you're going to stay with us because you're going to be yes. also talking about why it's important to have time away from your partner too, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How important it is. So join us after this for that. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we continue speaking with our love experts, if you fancy some really nice, relaxing me time, since we're having some gorgeous weather lately, this is a place that you might try and some a nice activity that you really, really love. Let's take a look. Here we are on a luxury cruise boat at the marina in Brighton. You can see there's lots of other yachts and boats over there and the sea is looking very green and almost tropical. We picked a perfect day. The sun is beaming down on us and we don't feel like we're in England at all. And we're being looked after by waterfront sailing crew. Duncan over there, he's um, worked with the waterfront sailing crew, he's driving us. And this is the sort of Marina Bay area, jetty I think you call it. It's only like an hour away from London and you feel like you're abroad and you get looked after well by the crew as well, so it's absolutely amazing here. The cruise that, that we're on now is just um, a local um, cruise um, from Brighton Marina and it normally lasts uh, one hour um, and we normally go to the pier, past the Palace Pier and on to the West Pier. Um, people can reserve the catamaran for hen parties and birthday celebrations. How, how many people can you take? Uh, up to 12 people on, on this yacht. Basically I just um, come down and help Duncan out with uh, waterfront sailing so when he's got some sort of uh, corporate dues or we do hen parties and things like that and he also does um, Royal Yachting Association um, training, I just come down and help him out when he needs extra crew for that so I'm just learning at the moment as well. So. Any time I've come to Brighton it's normally been just for the day, just to go to the beach and have fish and chips but something like this is really great to do because it's, it's just so different and beautiful. If people want to sort of see this and they think this would be fantastic, really fun things to do, how can they sort of find out and inquire about it? Um, Waterfront's got a website, um, www.waterfrontsailing.com. Mm -hmm. Also, we've set up a Facebook page and on that, um, if we've taken out anybody, Duncan will do a blog of what happened that day and put some pictures up and everything, so it's quite nice for people to see that. And if he's got anything going on, we're on Facebook as well, Waterfront Sailing on Facebook. So Duncan, thank you so much for this cruise, I've loved it. As I said, I feel like I'm abroad, I've had a relaxing time and it's an amazing thing to come and do. Thank you very much. Okay, it's been a pleasure from Waterfront Sailing. Oh, I wish I was there now. It'd be nice to be by the beach. I love, I love being here too, <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> Alright, so let's, so we haven't got long left, so let's get straight to... Now this, this uh, what I want to talk to you about today was sparked by a question that we had, so I'd just like to read that to you. I've been dating my boyfriend for almost four years now and we are having issues. Mm. I don't like him to do anything outside of working without me. I think we've reached a stage in our relationship where we should prioritise each other, but he says I smother him, which I think is really unfair. I already don't see him all day when we're both at work. What's wrong with wanting to spend time with the person that I love? <laughs> My there's friend, let the man breathe. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong uh, spending time with the person that you love. Uh -huh. right? mm -hmm. And I think when you speak about, when we're talking about spending time away from each other, having me time, um, it depends. I mean, because even me time, you're not going to have a, a me week, right? When you're talking about me <laughs> yeah. time, you're talking it. about... Maybe a couple of hours. That's my, my view, personally. I think it's important that you have... Do you have me time without Elena? Yes. Yeah. What do you like to do? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I but the only thing I like to do on my own is run. Running, yeah. yeah. Just, mm -hmm. but just on, that's it on my own. No, you haven't done that for a while, have you? <laughs> because I actually did I two days ago. Oh, did you? Well done. <laughs> I know he's been really busy lately. He's a bit of a workaholic too. Yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think it's important to have me time. Yeah, but that me time shouldn't be, like I said, like a week me time. Mm. It should be, you know, you have a couple of hours where you can unwind, do something that takes away your stress. Like uh, Christine said about her swimming, I imagine yeah. that's something that distresses her. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Well, maybe. The boys are just going to go and watch a, a football uh, match. Football match. Or oh, play a football match. Yeah, or, or play some darts. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it could be more than a couple of hours. I think I don't see anything wrong with mm -hmm. with uh, my husband having a hobby. I think it's actually important. You you were you were talking to um, uh, about uh, the importance of you know uh, spending time. You were talking to the um, I forgot her name Bianca. Bianca. Oh my yeah. God! Please forgive me, Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's important for the person to. To um, to be by herself a little bit, or to have some time to herself, because it's part of how how can I say like what you're saying. If the person is always with you, if she's like your whole world, mm. you can't live without the person. Yeah. Uh, if the person goes away, if the person I don't know, if the person dies, I don't know. <laughs> your life yeah. is over. That's so true. it's important that you invest you take this yourself, time, you invest in yourself, you get to know yourself more. What mm -hmm. what do you like? What are you about? Oh, I'm a sports person, or I like to, you know, quiet time, I like to crochet, I don't know, whatever. Plus, when you're away from each other, you kind of miss each other as well. If you're with the person all the time, mm. I mean, I know work is case different. If you're with the person all the time outside of work and you don't have any time apart or to do your own thing, it's like you kind of get used to each other, I think. And, and it's, it's, like, it's, also, and it's also important to mention that it's, it's important for that me time to be decided between the couple, because mm. for example, if the guy mm. says, look, me time is going to a nightclub, mm. a singles night out, that's not really a good <laughs> me time, right? Well, some people would agree, you would be surprised. Yeah, but it, it has to be something healthy oh, yeah. for both, yeah. right? Something that both of you agree, you, you understand that it's, mm. it's, it's good for both of you. So the guy likes to play football on, on a Saturday afternoon, mm. on a Sunday afternoon, there's nothing wrong with that. If the mm. guy likes to see his friends and, and you know, do something together, he healthy together with his friends. What's what's the problem with that? And that's that's good. And I find it attractive. I mean, my husband has a hobby. I mean, he likes to go out and run, 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 and run mm. some more. You know, for me, it's it's. I find it nice. I said, oh, we have things to talk about, yeah. different than work. Yes, and true. we don't have children, but it's like, oh, it's work, work, work. So it's interesting. The person has different. Oh, I, I did this, I went there and everything. I mean, And I think it's balance, important also for, the, for this viewer to know that just because your partner wants a bit of me time, that's no reflection on you as a person. It's not that he's fed up with you or the mm. other way around. It's not because he doesn't love you. It's just that everybody needs that. And I think it's good for you also to invest in yourself and have that me time because you're going you're gonna to be a happier person for it as well. But we've run out of time. Oh, mm -hmm. really? So I hope that's helped you guys at home. <laughs> and please, please do take some me time and invest in... Have a balance, like we were saying. Have a balance yeah. with things and make decide. Sit down and decide what's really important for you. Because there's sometimes, many times, when we're going to have to make sacrifices to get to places that we want to be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's going to be sacrificing something that we love to do a little bit mm -hmm. to get something else that we also love. So we just have to sit down and think sometimes and see what's really important. But guys, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. We'll see you again soon for another yeah. love yeah. talk show. Not love talk show. Sorry, <laughs> no, it's Chris and me show. Another love talk but theme. Thanks, thanks for plugging out. <laughs> yes, love talk is on when. Uh, Tuesday, Jesus. seven. 7, 7 yeah. p.m. Okay then. So thank you very much for watching and we'll be with you again on Friday. So do have a wonderful evening and we'll see you again next time. If you want more information about the show, chrissybshow.tv. Bye-bye for now. So are you going to take us with some training first, all right? Yeah, we will be. We've given you a little bit of training. Then we'll take her out on track after we... I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Just blank, oh dear. Maneuver the hovercraft and we go out on track from there. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to it and let's hopefully pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really enjoyed that and I can safely say that I passed that challenge because I won. I had great fun and it's not actually as easy as it looks, does it? Is it ill? Is it ill? <laughs> I haven't even done my speech yet. <laughs> Hello, ill. Sorry. <laughs> Bad.
<laughs> Neil. Neil. I haven't even said anything yet, it's great. Neil. Okay, sorry. What you said to him, like, Neil. <laughs> I had great fun today because it was really good. <laughs> sorry. Oh no, I can't get the giggles. <laughs> Alright, sorry. Do you want a quick cup of tea before we start again? <laughs> oh, great. Oh, God, here we go. We're going to have one of those days. I'm not going to lift. Alright. <laughs> 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 oh god! Oh dear! I can't snap out of it. Three, 